Welcome back to the Unleashing. I'm your host, Jerry Beeler. <clears throat> I got a quick story to tell you guys. Um, last week, I was over visiting family in Montana. I was over, I was over there hanging out for the weekend, and uh, last time I'd been over there, we had went to church afterwards, and uh, I'd gone to one of their churches. Well, my uh, brother-in-law, he, uh, he had talked to a lady, and she had told him about a, a church that she went to, and... Uh, and she was describing how there was a lot of Holy Spirit movement going on there and uh, that he should check it out. So uh, with the timing of me coming over and everything like that, I was told that we were going to just give it a shot and see what it was like and everything. And I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. We'll, uh, we'll check it out. So <clears throat> he had told me that, uh, that the lady he was talking to, she had a son and uh, he had been in the world and he's a teenager and had been in the world and stuff like that but she'd finally got him to come to church with her and uh he had gotten baptized but strangely enough he had been sick ever since then for the past two years and uh my brother-in-law he was telling me about this and uh and i'm listening and i'm like man that's really interesting uh but uh you know i don't know what to make of it uh it could be anything you know um, but I didn't, we didn't throw it out or anything like that. I just thought it was kind of an interesting detail to the story since I started going to that church. Well, we hung out for the weekend and, uh, Sunday came around and, uh, we went to go check this place out. And, uh, I didn't think it was going to be that big, but, uh, it was, uh, it was an old theater or whatever. And it was a fairly good sized building. Anyways, we go in and, uh, the auditoriums, like most fairly good sized churches, had a coffee stand and all this other stuff and everything and and uh, it had an african vibe to it it was very warm inside the art and stuff on the wall it was tan and uh, there was different like kind of like tribal looking design sort of things and and stuff like that but uh it seemed like it was a fairly decent place so we go down to the auditorium and uh we get in there and and uh we we get a seat towards towards the half of the back maybe the middle of the of the, this auditorium and you know I was kind of taking it all in and I'm sitting next to my family and everything and my uh, my sister and, and her brother and uh, and their daughter and uh, we're just kind of watching everything and, and I'm looking around at this place and you know uh, people seem like they're nice enough and everything and we don't see where the pastor is yet and and I'm um, looking down at the front, I'm just kind of taking in the colors of the place, which is interesting enough, the upper parts of the wall are all black, and the lower parts are green, and I thought it was kind of interesting that they would have an uh, auditorium that would be black like that. But uh, as I'm looking around, I start to notice that all the people in there are, uh, are sickly, like all of them. And not only that, they have disabilities, disabilities, Down syndromes, partial uh, retardation, things like that, that are everywhere. And, uh, and none of them are exactly of like top of the line sort of people. And I'm like, how peculiar is that? It was like a whole collection, the whole church was. Well, finally, uh, finally the the pastor shows up and he's wearing like a leather vest and stuff and uh, and he's not like that and he's doing some talking and uh, and I'm getting a feel for the whole thing you know we're all this is the first time we're there you know so we're all just kind of uh, taking it in and everything and, and uh, I'm listening to him talk you know and he starts talking ab about the power of God and the people there are ready to see a movement and stuff like that and instantly I get this feel that um, it's being forced. They're looking for power in this place and miracles and things like that and they're forcing them to take place. When is, whereas God shows up, when he shows up, you don't need to force anything. Uh, the awesomeness is on the spot. It happens. You don't need to fake anything or do any crazy seances or anything like that that, that weird, weird uh, you know, groups and stuff get into. You don't have to do that. You do not have to flip around on the floor. You don't have to make up words or anything like that. When the Holy Spirit of God shows up, you will instantly, if you're speaking in tongues, be speaking in a real language that's decipherable by that country or whatever that speaks that. And you do not have to make anything up at all and I and I get this sense instantly that's like it's being forced in that place but it's like well whatever you know but we'll just take it as it goes and you know we're only there for at least to try it once right so 
they start up the music and they start singing and uh it's absolutely hideous it's like nails on a chalkboard and uh i'm having a hard time uh dealing with it and the pastor i see starts going to different people working his way up the auditorium putting his arm around him whispering in their ear getting all close to him and stuff like that and i'm like oh great he's probably gonna make his way all the way up to me you know and i'm not really in the mood for this sort of thing and uh <laughs> he's he's coming all the way up and uh the music's still going, and they're like on their, their song or whatever, and I'm singing, uh, you know, and I don't really recognize any of the songs or anything like that, but I'm, I'm doing my best to like sing. And he's making his way up, and he keeps getting grabby with everybody and stuff like that, and finally, I'm like, you know, because I knew he was coming to me eventually, and he gets up there towards me, and he stops what he's doing, doesn't try to grab me or anything like that, stands back, I'm totally ignoring him singing, and then finally he just lowers his hand and sticks it out, and I just look over real quickly and go, good morning, or whatever I said, give him a nice death squeeze, and then left it at that, and then he moved on. Um, so, you know... I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, and the music's going, and um, the family member next to me, she has to go to the bathroom, so she leaves for a minute, and I'm in there, and I'm like, man, I'm going to need to get out of here and go to the bathroom in a minute, because this music is just absolutely horrid, you're not feeling it in the presence of God or anything like that, and, and I just can't, I can't put a vibe or, or feel on this place, it's just, nothing feels right about it, and then, uh, the singer, one of the singers, he starts doing some indirect preaching while he's singing, you know, about getting closer to God and what they want and all this other stuff. And it's just dragging on and, and none of it feels like God at all. And um, she comes back, family member comes back. And I'm like, my turn. I'm going to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom and I don't even want to go back down in there. I'm like, I'm going to wait for this. And it must have lasted another half an hour or so of singing. It was just ridiculously long. I went to the far side of the building inside uh, because I got a ride there. And, and I'm waiting and I'm just like, man, what is up with this place? This is like the worst feeling ever. There's something wrong here big time. And uh, finally I come back and the preaching had started and I, I go down and I sit with everybody again and, and I'm listening to the preacher as he's talking and he's talking about some trip or whatever he took to Africa or whatever and he was holding or, or something like that some child that had... Uh, had cancer and had just got chemotherapy or whatever and he was like talking in its ear and giving him all this this childlike words of affirmation and then it started to get bad because he was talking about the power of God coming down through him through through him and out from him and everything this pastor was saying was borderline like he didn't want to say it and straight come out and say it but it was right there that he had the power the power of healing was coming from him all glory goes to him right and I'm like uh oh this guy is bad news and this congregation which is all in there and sickly I remind you are all looking for a miracle are being swindled by this pastor as he's giving these hints of you know that are about to see some real miracles and some things happening if they just stick with him or whatever inside this uh, inside this church service or whatever and they're all going along with it and like first like he somehow knows the power he has the power and uh, you know and he's hinting towards it but while they're they're doing that this is all mind manipulation because people are playing along with it because they want to be close to this pastor or whatever so they will start to give power and credence to things like the hand of god being worked when it's not being worked at all they're they're forcing it to happen and like during the singing i'm watching these people move around that are almost like in a trance a seance of sorts doing these weird strange dances and things and it was straight up disturbing i'm like man these people are reaching so hard for a miracle and like they're looking to the wrong place because while they're all sick trying to be healed um they're giving this pastor who has no power uh the authority basically of god and they're being robbed of the very thing that they're looking for so this pastor's talking and he's talking about it and then he said afterwards how uh the mom had a dream about him the night before that he would show up and he was basically giving himself power and, and saying can you believe that, that this lady would actually have a dream about me before uh before i showed up and uh and then i would come to heal the child and all this other stuff and really setting himself up like some great one like simon the mangus almost right and i am getting 
I'm getting deeply disturbed, right? Like pissed off because everything about this is like wrong. And, um, and it continues on a little bit longer, and I'm thinking this is the sermon that he's preaching or whatever, and I had missed most of it because I was out in the auditorium as far away from the, the singing and stuff as I could be. And then the final cherry on top was, he goes, yeah, there are people out there that are looking for Christ's return, and then he instantly switches, but we don't need heaven on earth. See, we already have it with... Uh, each one of us, we're all ambassadors, and we can have it here on earth right now. We all have the power. And instantly I saw what was going on here. He was teaching the congregation, including himself, that the power was in them from being Christian or whatever. They are robbing it from God, putting it on themselves, and that they have the power and they don't need uh, God's return because they can have heaven on earth right now. I'm like, okay, that's enough. And thankfully, at the same time, they released the kids to go to their Sunday class. We'd been in there for what felt like an hour, hour and a half now, and the church service hadn't even started yet. I look at my family, they look at me, we are like, yep, let's get out of here. We stand up real fast. I go to the back, I'm like, yeah, get the kids out of here. Open the back auditorium doors, hold it open to get the kids out of there as fast as possible. Uh, Cause like, I feel bad the kids are even in there because everybody's getting duped by this whole thing, which is what we described as a cult movement, right? And uh, we end up getting the heck out of the church in the middle of service or before it even starts, right? And the whole thing, and I'm walking out the door, I'm like, you guys ever seen the movies where you're around people or uh, in the movie that they go to a group of people and they seem nice and, and sort of friendly, but something's off and they can't put their finger on it. And then shortly after this, they discover that they're cannibals and they got to run for their lives. I'm like, that's exactly what it felt like in that church. There was some weird, weird stuff going on in this church. It's called The River in Kalispell, right? And uh, deeply, deeply disturbing because it was, it was like a cult movement and we were like right in the middle of the whole thing. And these people had been brainwashed by this seducing pastor and they were all sickly and, and easily manipulated in their minds and were finding themselves sick and and looking for that miracle that they can't find because they're giving power to man and to themselves instead of where power actually comes from, which is from God. And it was so dark and disturbing, the oppression and the spirit of darkness in that place was just absolutely horrid. And afterwards, my uh, brother-in-law, he's like, you know, God brought us there for a reason or, or, or allowed us to see that for a reason. I'm like, yeah. And of course, since then, I've been praying for those people and against that whole thing that it would be shown for what it is, you know, because it's a, it was an abomination that was going on there. And then we were instantly reminded that... Uh, when, when my brother-in-law says, remember what I told you about uh, what she said about her son after he got baptized there at that church? He's been sick for two years straight and they can't figure out why. And I'm like, oh, wow, it all makes sense now. They were under a dark spirit of oppression in that church and uh, they need to get away from it as fast as possible. They are literally uh, robbing the power that only belongs to God and putting it on themselves, not wanting him or his kingdom, but their own. And they're basically denying the power thereof, just like spoken of in the Bible, right? And uh, man, it was disturbing, but I said I was going to talk about it because like, uh, you know, for people out there that define themselves in these dark places or, or groups, so like, don't ever be afraid to just walk out, uh, dust the dust off your feet, and and just get out of that situation because there are dark teachings out there that are mixing with uh, Christianity, and you have to be aware of that stuff because uh, it's very very dark and it can be very can be very deceiving if you're if you don't have the discernment and you're not watching. I want to read something I read this morning. I thought it was uh, right up. The alley was what I'm talking about. First um, Peter 4.11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All right. The point being, all glory goes to God. Whenever anybody asks me stuff, I always try to point it back. It's not me. Anything that comes from me, any any abilities or anything like that, that is all God's glory. And the individual that gets to use it is 
you know, the representation of that for God. But all glory o always goes back to God, and I always do my absolute best to point in that direction. Because this pastor, for instance, was not doing that. He was taking it upon himself to be some sort of magical healer and stuff like that, using the power of God that was bestowed upon him. And if basically you stick with him or, or you listen to him or you're with him or whatever else, that uh, you can be healed or, or see these things. And they were taking the power on themselves and the glory and in the very process robbing themselves of actually actual healing and power and not being able to see anything so they have to fake it and stuff like that in this in this cult church right and it's a it's a warning and so many different things and I've heard stories before uh, where people will take the credit for themselves when something that God has done or, or can only do and uh, and you never want to get yourself into that situation uh, all glory and honor goes to God and, and it can be so dangerous the very thing that you're trying to do or show or, or be seen or or that you've accomplished will literally flip around to the exact opposite and you will lose what you've accomplished you will not have that power and it'll be the exact opposite where you you're, you'll be robbed of that healing that only God did or could do and uh, and that is why you always want to give God the glory and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a warning message there. But uh, very interesting situation that uh, we had to experience there, and uh, it was very dark. I'm, I've never been in a, a church. I don't go to church very often, anyways. And I only started this year going back a little bit for singing and, and just being around some fellowship, which is hard to find because the fellowship honestly isn't there. Everybody is still planning for the future. Their 401ks, what they're going to do with retirement and uh, things of this nature and not realizing that the end has come. We are there. This is the time that it's going to happen. It's right now. It's only been warned about for, everybody's had a long enough warning. So if, if they miss it, that's on them. But we are at that time right now. And uh, there there is no real fellowship in that sense because people don't want it. And only the very few which have to come from different areas of the world and collect in different places. For instance, you know, like just talking right now, um, you, you have to come from so far because you're so f you're so few and in between for those that are actually looking for the return of the Lord and want his will to be done. I, I hear them preaching, thy kingdom come, they will be done. It's like, all right, thy kingdom come. Let's talk about Jesus. His kingdom's right here and his will's about to be done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's a long time off, or at least we want it to be a long time off. We don't want God coming back right now. It's like, well, what are you preaching then? Because everything that just came out of your mouth is a lie. You don't want his kingdom, nor do you want his will. And, uh, and they're completely against it and, it, and it's so disturbing. And for that reason, like I say, <clears throat> I was pulled out of the church in 2013, and I haven't looked back, and, and I couldn't be a part of that uh, that uh, sort of a group because I was called to go out and talk to people in different locations and things like that, which I have done, right? So um, it was uh, it was all perfect timing by God, and, uh, and he was uh, making the way for me to go out and, and uh, do what he had planned and stuff like that. But uh, anyways, I wanted to share that story with you guys. Maybe it, uh, maybe it could help somebody or something, and, and things to watch out for, all right? It's, it's always dangerous out there, you know, and, and that's why I'm totally for, like, home churches and stuff like that, you know, where you're reading with your family the Bible, you're talking, you have some friends over and things like that, you know, how it was back when the church was first founded and not the congregations and things, which you can be saved in, which are actually offshoots of Roman Catholicism created from when Martin Luther broke off from the Roman Catholic Church, which was actually founded and started by Simon the Magus because Peter never went to Rome, which I've talked about before. And the Roman Catholic Church knows this. They found uh, Peter's body in, uh, in Israel, in Mary and Martha's tomb back in 1953 or something like that it was a long time ago but anyways so they already know about it but uh but uh yeah no i i really i i don't i don't have anything to do with with the church buildings really for the most part and only this year have i started to kind of go back but i'm already i'm already getting to the point where i'm getting kind of burnt out with it so but uh but anyways i want to share that story real fast because uh Man, it's deeply disturbed me ever since it, it happened last, uh, last Sunday. I think it was last Sunday you now. So, yeah, very, uh, very crazy. I got a few things I want to go over. <clears throat> um, so the word is food prices. They're going to explode, right, this year um, because of the, the price of uh, fertilizer and things like that. These, uh, these places aren't going to be able to plant. It's just shot up so much. So it's going to cause food prices to shoot through the roof. They're estimating it's going to cost 
thousands of dollars basically per individual a month to uh, to feed people and stuff like that. Um, for those that, you know, prep and stuff like that, you might have a little bit of a stockade. And, and I have for years uh, prepped on, on different food supplies and things like that. But that's not where my hope is, obviously. It's in uh, the return of the Lord, which is going to be happening imminently. My point being, when you see these food prices, them talking about World War III all over the place and how it could happen and nukes and stuff are being brought out, where do you see this symbolism at in the first parts of the tribulation when it starts? Uh, war. War. All right, the second horse, the Antichrist showing up, death on the scene, all right, two billion people dying, quarter of population, and uh, economic collapse where it costs a day's wage for a loaf of bread back in the time, all right, and this is the kind of stuff that we're starting to see get ready to amp up and take place right now. It's happening. It's going to be happening with this, within this year. So if that is going to be happening within this year, all right, it is pretty obvious that the Lord's return is absolutely imminent, okay? And that is the point for all this. It's why we look for the signs and things like that. We already know that it's there. It's in quintuple over, over time, like I've said before, and how many others, including yourselves, know that we are way late in the hour uh, to be getting out of here, okay? And uh, all this stuff is just lining up more and more and more. And that vision that I had, all right, I've shared it so many times, all right, what I saw when I was taking up, was it a collage or whatever else? I don't know, and there very well could be, because I saw UFOs at first, but when I was blasting up, that was the least part of my mind, because I didn't even see the UFOs when I was shooting up. So was it a time collage? Very well possibly could be, because we've also heard people, multiple people, say they went up or saw themselves going up the same time that bombs were coming down. So do UFOs come later and I just start part of a time collage in the future actually past the rapture? Very well could be, all right? But in further news, to go along with that, because the last two things that have needed to take place for that vision are the UFOs showing up worldwide, and the other was my stepdad showing up, which is on the East Coast. Well, the word is now in the family that uh, he's going to be showing up in uh, May or June. So I've, I've watched this thing unfold throughout the past eight years each detail each detail over and over again to where I where it is now and, and I can't help but you know just you know almost in a chuckling laugh of course that it's all going to be playing out exactly like it was showing because that's exactly what I saw and and uh, and so far it, it's all been deadly accurate so uh, I thought that that was pretty interesting and of course um, of course, hearing that, you know, it's like, well, there's the last piece of the puzzle because uh, that only that's lining up with this year and, and us getting out here at the same time. So um, very interesting. Um, I got something else I want to share. Man, it's so hard to talk about this. Uh, you get strikes, you get your videos taken down. So I don't know exactly how to say it. You got to be careful. But uh, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. I have a family member who works in a, a morgue and uh, she's a nurse and stuff like that. And she's going through the training She's going through the training. She's not a nurse yet, but uh, she's going through the training and she works for a morgue and, uh, and uh, the director there and stuff like that. They've uh, definitely seen all the issues that we've talked about before. And uh, one of the things that they have also discovered is on a lot of these certain people, when they go to drain the blood and they're hanging them upside down or whatever to get any out, that none comes out. And they've never seen this happen before. It's like all been coagulated or blocked off. So uh, I thought that that was very interesting and it's just more details coming out about uh, certain things and uh, it's deeply disturbing. And we don't know how exactly this is going to turn out. We don't know if these uh, people will eventually be monsters or whatever else. I mean, you, just, you don't know, but there is something in there. I think that there's a, a symbiotic being that is growing inside these people alongside of them, those that survive it or have, have the DNA or whatever that's able to... Uh, to last long enough um, for what the goal is, uh, I think it's going to fall right into uh, some crazy stuff that happens inside the tribulation, including the Walking Dead or something else. I mean, uh, I just don't know, but uh, but it's very very disturbing. Um, everything happening which you see going on over in Ukraine and stuff like that. All right, when you see why are they doing this? That's only going to start World War Three. Uh, that is the entire point. All right, they are going to start it, right? Remember what I said, they've already pulled the trigger on this thing. So they have to actually go through with it now. There is no way out of it. They're, they're going to do it. And this also lines up with visions and stuff like that that people have had that before the end happens, you know, there's going to be World War III, and including before aliens show up again and all this other stuff. Um, if you guys watch any other 
stations and stuff like that, they are talking about that planet coming through, the, the Nibiru system, and it will take part of uh, what happens to the tribulation and things like that, and, and it's what's causing earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff and all those things to take off place, so I mean, it's all, it's all happening right there. Um, but they are pushing towards that, and there is no going back. This isn't going to be put on stall anymore or just talk. They actually have to go through with it. So all this stuff that is happening over there, I think they put, well, what's his name in, back in 2014 or, or whenever it was. Um, it's the public that doesn't know. So the publics are the ones that are paying the price. But uh, they're all in bed together, and uh, remember what, the, what they're going to do. Eventually, after World War III or during that time, they're going to roll this over overnight into a 10-nation region worldwide, and they're going to split everything up into where they want those categories. And when the dust settles from war and stuff like that, which will be relatively fast, they're going to have that. So any of the stuff over there is all pre-positioning, pre already planned stuff. You have not even begun to see the power that runs. Russia actually has. This is just child's play nonsense. If it, they're struggling or saying, oh, we're having a hard time or anything like that, this is all propaganda. In an instant, if uh, Russia were to show its actual military might on what they have strategically with bombs and stuff like that, it would be as fast as America going. They could do it in an instant. All right. So they're not, uh, they're not showing with that. These are all just position pieces, getting things ready, causing conflict, causing misdirection. All right, but it's all going to play into what the goal is. Uh, America getting taken out, China getting the land over here, um, Russia getting the northern parts, including Alaska and stuff like that. I think they've been dipping down inside the hollow earth. Um, I think they're getting resources and stuff down there. I have for a while. Uh, they've said a couple times that they've discovered uh, new islands and things like that up in the north that weren't on maps before. I don't think that... Uh, I think they're just kind of hinting at it, but uh, they've they've kind of gone down inside that dip up there, and they've uh, discovered some more land and stuff like that, and they're getting resources out of there. I think that's all part of it, um, but uh, that's beside the point. But anyways, no, this stuff is all going to happen, and it's not going back, and you can see that right now. You're not, you can't recover from what they've done. All right, there's another thing. They have to go through with it. And they have to do it in a way that they're not going to be caught red-handed because there are still enough people that could overthrow them worldwide if we were to unite against it. But there can't be any uniting, which is why they cause division all the time in everything that they're doing. All right? And they're constantly doing misdirection from one thing to another, like I said. First one thing, then you don't hear about it. Then it goes to war. From war, it'll be aliens. From that, it'll be the planet system coming through. From that, it'll be who never knows what else. All right? The two witnesses causing trouble over in Israel. If they just get rid of them, the whole world will be a better place, all right, when they show up. Um, it's just going to be one thing after another, all right? But why they're doing that, they're causing that misdirection and, and that division among people. They won't. It causes people not to unite and go against the real problem, which is them working with Satan and everything else. Of course, at the same time, it's also written out that it's going to be this way. So, I mean... <sighs> For those that know, I mean, fight it, resist it, do what you can, always walk with God. But the goal is, the ultimate goal is to get out of here. Give your life to Jesus. Uh, actually walk with him. Repent of sins. Don't follow the once saved, always saved crowd that's alive. It's going to get left behind if they're not doing what's right. And, uh, and actually walk with the Lord and get out of here because you don't want to be here when this kicks off. The whole point of it is to be an adult spanking to the world so that they let go of the world. They get right with God and uh, they give their hearts to him and, and realize that he's the only way and, and his kingdom come, his will be done. All right. And you want to be a part of that. And you don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be. You don't want to be in the world when this happens because it's going to be an absolute nightmare. It's already getting. You see how bad it is right now. We haven't even seen the tribulation. It hasn't even started yet. It's close, but it hasn't even started yet. When it really happens, you don't want to be. You don't have anything to do with that much awful negativity and darkness. It's going to be worldwide. It's going to be terrible, and there's just going to be so much death everywhere. You're. You'll never be the same again. All right. Everybody's going to have PTSD. Okay. It's. Uh, it's terrible. All right. We have to have God. It's the only way that it works. you got to follow Him. You give all credit and glory to Him. Don't be searching for power or anything like that. Um, you know, in line with that story I told you guys earlier with that pastor or whatever there in Kalispell, Montana. It's, uh, you don't, uh, you don't want to go down that road, but, uh, no, this, this whole thing really is happening. More stuff lines up. I know that it is. What God said about it being within a year's time or, or, or most definitely this year, um, you know, I didn't know what it meant. I, I've been fair about that the whole time. I told you guys, I did not quite understand what was going on. It's just what I was told and I've shared it. But as this keeps rolling around and getting closer back to that year's timeline, um, 
uh, it seems to be pretty obvious at this point that uh, he was definitely speaking of a year. And I went through all the all the stuff that I needed to. Okay, I heard it. Right, I didn't share it on the spot. I talked to him. I asked for confirmations, which I got on the spot, and I did everything within my due diligence that I could to see that it was real and not just hearing things because it's so awesome to hear him say something like that that it was almost unbelievable. Okay, but that is what he said, and that's what I've shared the whole time. Right. And like I said, I went through all the due diligence of asking for confirmations and everything else, which he gave me. And uh, and now, more and more, it's looking like it's about to line up. We're going to be at spring oh, next Saturday or Sunday. And uh, we're finally into that season. And, uh, and I believe that he's coming back within spring. That's what it looks like. So, I mean, that's exciting. And uh, it's going to be absolutely amazing to wake up. And uh, every problem you could ever possibly have or worry about is completely gone instantly. It's all taken care of. And to feel joy forever and never have to worry about a problem again like that. And to know that we're always with God and that we made it and you passed the test. It's going to be the most amazing feeling ever. You'll never wake up in a bad mood again. It's, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I can't wait for it to happen. And we're closer than ever. It's actually in that time. And we're fortunate enough to live in that time where we get to see it. Uh, many of us are going to skip death. And, uh, and there's not many people that have ever lived that uh, they get to say anything like that. So it's, it's pretty exciting that we're in that time. But of course, it also calls us to go through a harder time leading up to it. And evil is trying to wear out the saints right now. And uh, it's been very, very difficult leading up to it. As you guys know, it's, it's tough. But we're almost there. We're almost through this. So those that are walking alone in this with their families and, and, and maybe you're the only one in your family, don't give up because we're right there and it's closer than ever. And uh, we're just about to be out of here. We're about to pass the test. So don't give up, okay? All the signs are there. Everything's really happening. And all the stuff that you could count on to expect right before the tribulation starts, which we're seeing not only in, uh, you know, uh, food prices or anything else. I just saw that uh, uh, new vehicle prices are up 41%. <laughs> it's like you can't afford to get anything at all. You can't do anything at all. You're we're just along for the ride. As gas prices are increasing, it's locking more people down into the place. And, uh, you know... They're talking about EMPs and everything else. I mean, it's going to be absolutely disastrous, but God's going to get us out of here, and you can trust in that, all right? The closer we get, the more calm I get, because it's like, finally, it's over, and uh, the more signs are actually pushing to the disaster, there's only more signs that it's actually pushing towards the return of uh, Jesus, and then uh, and then this is going to be done with, and I'm so ready for it to be done with. I've definitely had enough. I've, I've had enough fun, so, um, you know, hang in there. Don't give up, and... Uh, uh, let that be encouraging to you, all right? When you see the worst stuff start to happen, also be encouraged at the same time that the best thing's about to happen because it only points towards that. And uh, you can be encouraged in that, okay? God bless. I'll catch you in the summer in the leash, and I'll see you in the air. And uh, you guys take care of yourself, all right? Bye.